Oh. It's a nice day out here. Come on, boys. It smells like rain, though. I wonder if we had rain overnight. So, good morning. How'd you sleep? I slept all right. It felt a little short, though. But it's Friday, so before you know it, we'll be back here. We'll be enjoying the weekend. Maybe we'll go clear some more of the bush at our land. Make ourselves useful and productive this weekend. So what's going on in the trucking world today? How are those fuel shortages going down there on the east coast of the U.S.? I heard about that whole uh, pipeline shutdown and crazy situations. I've seen all kinds of uh, interesting situations where people have been finding interesting ways to store fuel. I saw one person who put fuel into plastic bags. There was another one who was putting fuel into like Walmart storage bins. Did you get your fuel? <laughs> Are you hoarding fuel too? It's crazy when people start panicking that's that causes a bigger problem than the original problem itself usually is when people start panicking but what do you do if that happened here i would likely do the same thing i like to try to be prepared for anything like that but you can't ever be prepared for everything and suddenly everyone says oh there's going to be a gas shortage well you can bet i'll probably be taking the jerry cans that i have and running over to the gas station and filling them up I think that's a, a natural reaction. Uh, putting them in plastic bags, that is not a natural reaction for me. That is strange. And putting them in Walmart, don't do that. Don't do that. I heard that one, one guy's Jeep blew up because he put uh, gasoline in uh, uh, containers that were not made for gasoline and something happened. Static electricity. That's the thing. You put it, you, if you put gasoline into these containers that aren't made for it, the static electricity generated as the vehicle's moving can spark and set that off as a bomb in the back of your car. That's why they have to be in proper gasoline jerry cans, properly contained so that that doesn't happen. I heard that somebody, uh, somebody got lit up and had to learn that the hard way. I hope they're okay, but you, you gotta be careful out there. People are crazy. It's good to be back in the truck. Oh, we got the work shades on, and we got the bull snot hat. Now we're ready for a good day. Don't forget, we still got the Timmy's. Usually I finish it before I get here, but whatever. It's Friday, let's go crazy. Should have rode the motorcycle to work today. It's gonna be a hot one. So I've already done this whole walk around already, but I'll do it again for the sake of, of you fine people. We have the landing gear rolled up. We're taking this 53 foot roll tight up to two lawn and we're loading some stuff in it. We're gonna put some stuff inside it and then we're gonna bring it back here. And it's gonna be fun. You just wait and see. I don't know why I'm kicking the tires again. I already did this. There you go. I'm pretty sure this was the one with the hole in the roof. Oh, I just thought of that now and I did my pre-trip there. I did check it out. Now let's just, uh, I didn't notice any hole and I wasn't specifically looking for one either. Let's just quickly peek in there. Oh yeah, there's a big patch over there. Can you see it on the roof there? Can you see it? Yeah, they patched it up. Okay. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. I would have noticed it before, but since I remembered that this was the one with the hole, it's good to just double check to be specifically sure that everything is tremendously perfect tremendous look we got a, a little a flashy blinky light there very nice very nice all right guys Put the 
seat belt on so I don't fall out. I like to drive with the windows open, so gotta make sure you stay in the truck and don't get knocked out with one of the Winnipeg potholes. Let's just make sure that uh, this trailer is not gonna fall off. And spike those brakes. It's connected. Wunderbar. Off we go. Another adventure. Are they going to be here today? There they are. They're always at this corner right here. Morning, guys. <laughs> seen any of their babies, whole bunch more right there. I haven't seen them on the actual roadway once this year yet, so I guess whatever I'm doing is working. We'll just say that, okay? <laughs> the city is growing so fast in this area in the southeast. All these new homes being built, and I can't imagine how expensive they must be with the price of lumber right now. I was talking with my buddy Will yesterday, and he's uh, hoping to buy a house soon. Or at least looking into it, you know, looking at his options and everything. And uh, we're talking about the price of lumber right now is insane. And the price of houses is already insane. And then on top of that, the lumber's going up and everything's going up. So it's really weird that the housing market, everything is selling so fast right now and people are paying more for the houses than they're worth here. A lot of these homes that are selling have, you know, like seven to eight bidders like having a bidding war over them and they're, they're paying way more for them than they're worth. Which I'm wondering, when is that gonna come back to bite them in the butt? Because let's say you buy that farm right there, that's a beautiful farm. I'm gonna guess it's probably worth not this close to the city. My best guess, five, six hundred thousand dollars Maybe more. People are paying like six, six, like like five hundred fifty to six hundred thousand dollars, like almost a hundred thousand dollars more than the, than the asking price in some in some cases. Sometimes like fifty thousand dollars more. Like we made a pretty good chunk of change on our house and we sold it too. So if you're paying more than the house is worth, and you know ten years down the road you want to sell it, how are you going to get that money back when the housing market goes back down to its normal level, assuming it will? thoughts that go through my head. I don't know. You can tell that I'm in my 30s now because 10 years ago, this was not the same things that were going through my head. I had a totally different, totally different set of thoughts when I was like 23. Well, actually, I bought my first house when I was 23. So maybe like 15 years ago when I was 18. But then I, I've always been a very independent guy and I've always wanted to get into a house. Because I know that that's a good place to store your money. If you got a bunch of money, you leave it in your bank account. Hyperinflation is coming, whether you believe it or not. With all of this money that's just being pumped out to people, free money being tossed out here and there, eventually there's going to be so much money circulating around and not enough people working, it's going to hyperinflate. So you have $50,000 saved in the bank right now. What could you buy with that? Let's say you could buy a brand new pickup truck in cash, $50,000. Well five years down the road, that $50,000 isn't going to buy you half a pickup, because now that pickup is going to be worth $75,000. You know, or a hundred thousand. I've been really looking into getting my, uh, getting savings, and then putting that investment into something other than currency, you know? I'm not a financial advisor, don't listen to me for financial advice, but you know, like, Things like uh, cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin or gold, silver, anything that's going to hold its value. Because I, I'm, uh, I'm looking at what's happening with all of our uh, money being pumped out, and I really think there's going to be some kind of inflation coming. All right, we're here. We're actually an hour early, so it looks like they're ready for us. That's good. Let's get this cover open on the trailer, and let's get loaded and get out of here. 
Just rolled it all the way to the back today. I'm gonna load everything up in the front portion of the trailer. It's not gonna take up the whole trailer, so. This one, like I said, the flats, they roll really nice. The guy here helped me too, and it just rolls like butter. Much better than those step decks. I don't like those step decks. But, you know, like I say, they're slowly getting them refurbished, so. As that happens, they'll become easier to deal with, just like these flats are nice and easy to deal with. What do we got in here? What's this? What's this doing in here? Did someone cut this off? Did someone cut this? Why? Why is that cut? What the world? Why? So instead of uh, properly dealing with this, someone just cut that right off like that and wasted a strap. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'm always fixing other messes. I flipped it around. I see what's going on here. See that bolt right there? It pinned this section in there so tight. I can't get that out of there either. <sighs> but now it looks like that. Now it looks even worse. Dang it. Yeah, she's stuck. I'm just gonna roll this closed. There's four stops on here. Going down to the US. Uh, let's see, where are they going to? If you're curious where our loads go to, if you wanna come drive here with us, uh, this load is going to, one's going to Waynesville, North Carolina. One's going to Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. One's going to, looks like Lebanon, Pennsylvania. And the last one's going to Cartersville, Georgia. That doesn't make sense. Why would a Pennsylvania? It must not be in the right order. Fort Gulfthorpe. Fort Gulfthorpe. Oh, it looks like two of them are going to Fort Gulfthorpe, Georgia. Okay, that Pennsylvania one, that was, uh, that was different. Sometimes the, uh, the consignee is different than the ship to location. Sometimes the, the business is in another state or province, but it's being shipped to a different location. So yeah, that's just three stops on this load by the looks of it. And then we just have to pop our head in here, make sure that those hooks have hooked on properly, and then go tighten it up at the back. And this load will be officially on the road to Georgia and North Carolina. sorted out by the time this truck uh, by the time this trailer gets down there i know north carolina and georgia are in the middle of that uh pipeline fuel crisis what a mess eh there's a bee in here there's a bee that just flew in over there be gone bee did you see that gotta wait for that truck anyway he's in here somewhere where are you he's in there somewhere He's hiding in behind there. There's a big wasp. Well, I guess we're taking him for a ride. Just gonna leave the window open for him. Hopefully he finds his way out to freedom. Or hey, maybe he heard
heard me say that this is going down to Georgia and North Carolina. Maybe he wants to go down there. He's gonna have to switch trucks because this truck isn't going down that far. thinking about it and then they'll decide not to do anything <laughs> okay so we got people coming from that direction right now they're on this road we're gonna have to wait till that direction is clear and then uh, now we got people coming from this direction here by the time you see them it's too late when you're fully loaded with a tractor trailer it's easy to get across here on a motorcycle or on, in a like a personal vehicle. It's not that big a deal, but you know, like usual, when they create these things, uh, these intersections and interchanges in Winnipeg here, they don't think about the truckers. That would be silly. Why would they think about the truckers? They're not important. I always forget my engine brake. That's the load I refused the other day.
all of those white pieces. They were loose before. You can see how they fixed that by banding it together. All those green bands weren't there. So they did fix it. And someone else went and picked it up. This one, however, looks like it's, they didn't fix this one. Someone brought this back here and this was still loose. I can't move from here because it's a bit of an awkward angle, but that can bang against that and that. It's completely loose. I should have banded that. I still wouldn't have taken it until they banded that myself personally. But They did fix all the rest of that stuff, so that's good. I realized it after I uh, posted the video that I didn't actually show you why I refused it and uh, what what was loose. I didn't show you. I apologize for that. I should have shown it in that vlog. But after the day's done and you're editing it together, you can't just go back and film an extra part, right? <laughs> see that white piece there? That was loose as well. I'm gonna climb up here and see. Huh? Looks like they did band this piece in here, but not very well. Look how loose that band is. They obviously put it on the... Well, they tried. So that, again, wasn't. They banded these together now. You see that there? And there's another band there that's totally loose, but none of these bands were there. They just had all the freight just laying in there. And there was no way for me to secure it. So uh, I called in, I, I sent pictures in to dispatch right away. And this is what I'm dealing with. I said, I can't take this on the road. And they know that if I say I can't take a load, there must be a good reason because I, I don't refuse loads ever. I don't care what they throw at me. They throw at me a mess like this. As long as it's loaded correctly, I'll figure out how to secure it and I'll get it to where it needs to be. I'll do whatever I have to do. The only time I would is if there's just nothing I can do about it. The only way to fix this, like I don't carry bands like this around. I mean, and it's not really something that most truckers would carry with them. That is supposed to be loaded correctly. So one sec, let me climb up here. <sighs> Let's go see what they all did here. So this band didn't help anything, but uh, well, I tried. Someone got it here. These are all banded together, that's good. This band here is loose. Right here, that band is also loose. I see that he put the tires down. Remember they were stacked six high? So he, they moved four tires to here, moved those down because they, the way they were loaded there before, it'd be very hard to secure that. This strap is pretty loose, there's, you know, Okay, uh, and this is the part up here that I was mostly worried about and this is why I refused it. Uh, the main part in here. Aha, you see there's a green strap on there now, green band, but those are all banded together now and can't move. You see how this wood isn't touching it? These are just sitting in here, like floating, just sitting on that wood there. How am I gonna, right? You get it, you get it. Let me see if I can get in here. Okay. All of this freight here. Oh, this is still loose. They didn't fix that one. Those are fixed. This one here. Oh, and look at this. This is why I climbed up here. I wanted to see this. These guys right here. Oh, they did band them together all the way at the other end over there. I don't know if the GoPro is the fisheye lens. These were just loose. These are the main reason that finalized my decision. They were literally just sitting in this hole in here without any securement. And uh, I was not going to pull that out onto the road, but they did fix it, they made it better. And another one of our drivers went and picked it up and obviously gave it a good look over because he would have known that it was refused. And uh, they felt confident tied it down and here it is so yeah when a couple of you were asking in the comment section what happens when I refuse a load well it doesn't happen that doesn't happen very often I think that's that might even be the first one ever in 10 years that I've actually said no to usually I'll figure it out 
uh, what happens is you take pictures of everything. The more pictures, the better. Take pictures of everything, send them in to the office, to the right people, and then explain to them why it's unsafe and they'll have to rework it. Like the people who loaded it had to come out and rework it and band it together. And they did come out, the shippers came out and they, they looked at the freight and they agreed with me. They're like, oh, that must have, uh, must have been overlooked. And you know, accidents happen, mistakes happen. I'm gonna crawl to the back here. Can't hold anybody to perfect standards because you know, it happens. So they came out, they agreed. They're like, yeah, we're gonna fix this for you. And meanwhile, I took a different load and uh, this trailer made it back here eventually. So, oh, I'm way too, uh, ow. Not as limber as I used to be. <laughs> oh, okay, wow. Okay, let's drop this trailer. I have to pick up a, a van trailer and just quickly rip into the city pick something up and bring it here. So I'm just gonna go and do that on my own if you guys don't mind. I've already filmed quite a bit today already. So I will talk to you guys when I'm back from that. That was just a quick pickup in a van trailer. It was a load going to Minnesota. I forget where, Windrook or Windrook or Wind something? Minnesota. Not going very far, but it's there and it's ready for the, uh, for the highway driver. Now, we are getting out of here. It's the weekend, almost. Just about, we just need to get through this gate. Come on, come on, let me out. Let me out, it's the weekend. Just on the other side of that gate, it's waiting there for us, can you see it? Yeah, it's calling us. Trucker trash, it's the weekend, trucker trash. Oh, 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 oh. Don't spin the tires. Don't be too obvious. Don't don't get too excited. Oh, that took everything in me not to just peel out. Okay. It's officially the weekend. We've left. Technically, I guess we've got to get off the driveway, right? Or how technical are we being here? There, I'm on the public road. It's the weekend. Look at that nice Peterbilt over there on the right, that green one. Nice. <laughs> 